This conference will now be recorded. So today we have two speakers. Uh, first is Brian Lipscomb. He is an engineer with the North Carolina DOT in the hydraulics unit and the stormwater highway stormwater program. Brian is currently the program manager for the post-construction stormwater program and the BMP toolbox. He served as the department's representative in the development of the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality's minimum design criteria for stormwater control measures. In addition to stormwater items, Brian also serves as a hydraulics project manager for living shorelines and other coastal resil resiliency projects. Our second speaker will be Gregory Granado. He is currently the Federal Highway Administration's National Stormwater Specialist in the Office of Project Development and Environmental Review. Greg previously worked at the USGS New England Water Science Center and has about 30 years of experience in water quality, stormwater management, and water resources coordination in connection with highway programs. He has authored or co-authored more than 60 reports on hydrology, hydraulics, and water quality. And Greg is the author of the Stochastic Empirical Loading and Dilution Model, model seldom, uh, in addition to 19 other hydrologic software packages. So, uh, Brian and Greg, I'll hand it over to you guys. All right. Thank you, Catherine. appreciate that introduction. Uh, happy to, to be here with you all this afternoon. Um, as Catherine mentioned, I'm Brian Lipscomb with North Carolina Department of Transportation in our hydraulics unit in our highway stormwater program. And myself and Greg will be speaking to you all today about a decision support tool to assess the impacts of highway runoff in North Carolina using the stochastic empirical loading and dilution model, or SELDOM for short. Um, <clears throat> so we'll jump right in. So North Carolina DOT has a post-construction stormwater program, which is based on a maximum extent practicable treatment standard. Just for some background, MEP is a concept in section 402 of the Clean Water Act, which states that MPDS stormwater permits shall require stormwater control measures to reduce the discharge of pollutants to the maximum extent practicable. By design, the definition of MEP is allowed to change over time and space. So maximum extent practicable, what does that even mean? Surely it can't mean that we have to build wastewater treatment plants to treat stormwater runoff from the road before it's discharged to the stream or river, right? Many, if not most state DOTs have a prescriptive treatment standard defining MEP. These more prescriptive treatment standards may be something like this. Uh, DOT projects must treat the runoff generated from a one inch rainfall event, for example. And if the DOT successfully designs a stormwater control measure to treat the runoff from that one inch storm, then that constitutes containment or constitutes attainment of that MEP standard, which is fairly straightforward, but it's not very flexible. So however, at NCDOT, we do not have that prescriptive treatment standard defining MEP. So it's really left up to interpretation on a case by case basis. This has its advantages, but can also be a nightmare considering the NCDOT has the second largest state maintained transportation network in the country, second only to Texas. And we have a lot of projects under development at any given time. And all of those projects are covered by our MPDS post-construction stormwater program and this MEP standard. So that case-by-case -case interpretations of MEP can lead to problems of consistency across the state. So how do we ensure statewide consistency in our approach to environmental protection and stormwater treatment while still enjoying the flexibility that's often necessary when you're working within the linear rights away? The answer to that begins with a concept that we need to take a balanced approach between what would be the true maximum extent and what is actually practicable. We don't need to be installing many wastewater treatment plants at each discharge point, but at the same time, we need to have confidence that the stormwater discharge is not likely to impact attainment of in-stream water quality standards. So a balanced approach sounds good, but what does that mean? 
obviously DOT needed some kind of process to define how we're going to make stormwater treatment decisions for the hundreds of projects under design at, at any given time. So <clears throat> NCDOT has developed a kind of a high level five-step process to attain that MEP standard. We start with establishing and documenting stormwater treatment goals at each outfall or each project area. Then we design the drainage to achieve the stormwater treatment goals. We document any site constraints that may impact attainment of those goals. And then we design our best management practices or stormwater control measures given any of those site constraints and ultimately wrap it up with documentation and a final stormwater management plan. So for the rest of this presentation, we're really gonna just focus on step one of that process, which begs the question, so how does one establish a stormwater treatment goal? At any given point in time, there are scores of hydraulic engineers designing drainage and stormwater treatment facilities on DOT projects all across the state who are now being asked to establish treatment goals on a case-by-case -case basis. So how is it possible that this five-step process could ever work and we ever hope to have consistent levels of water quality protection statewide? To help us work out that solution to that problem, NCDOT teamed with a group of very sharp people from USGS to devise a novel tool to make a quick and easy establishment of, of those stormwater treatment goals. So we knew of USGS's stochastic empirical loading and dilution model, or SELDOM, and all of its capabilities, but we also understood that that is a very complex model and it has a bit of a learner's curve. So we wanted to see if there was a way for us to leverage its capabilities, but to develop a more user-friendly application. So this is where we turn to USGS to help us lay out a process and ultimately develop such a tool. So it's also here that I'm gonna turn things over to Greg and let him talk to you more about the model itself and that tool development. So Greg, take it away. Thank you. Um, yeah, if you would advance the slide, please. All right, so we started out with the SELDOM model. So the decision support tool is based on SELDOM. SELDOM is basically, um, there are some complexities to it, but it's you boil it down and it's a mass balance model. So what, what you need to do to figure out whether you're gonna have an effect on the downstream water quality is you generate some upstream concentrations and storm flows, which give you your upstream loads and you have your highway runoff or BMP discharge loads, which is the concentration times the storm flow, either off the highway or out of a BMP. And you add the two loads together, you add the st two storm flows together, and you divide the load by the downstream, the downstream load by the downstream storm flow, and you calculate that concentration of interest downstream of your highway outfall. Uh, next slide, please. So this, this um, North Carolina development effort was built on a previously constructed uh, version of SELDOM for North Carolina. Um, it uses precipitation, stream flow, water quality, and other statistics that we extracted from North Carolina data sets to simulate outcomes that would be relevant to North Carolina highway projects. Next slide, please. So that initial study, which was done before we even conceived of this decision support system, um, was is available in Scientific Investigations Report 2019-5031, which is, if anyone's interested, they can find it on the USGS Publications Warehouse. Um, for that study, we used uh, 92 selected National Oceanic Atmospheric administration hourly precipitation stations. Now that data set is embedded within SELDOM. It's there nationwide for anyone to use. Um, SELDOM has its own stream flow data set, but for North Carolina, we looked at 266 stream gauges in and around North Carolina to come up with state level predictions of statistics by and also by echo region. Um, and then 
you know, the question is, if you're going to have a effect on water quality, you kind of need to know what the upstream water quality is going to be. You know, if you are in some nice rural basin and you put in some highway runoff, you might have a bigger effect than if you're, you know, in downtown Raleigh where there's a lot of urban runoff. So for that, we were able to find 57 stream gauges with uh, sufficient water quality um, to compute what, is, what we call water quality transport curves, which are relations between stream flow and concentrations. Um, we, we, as part of the initial project, we gathered data from seven North Carolina highway runoff reports. That was 25,000, uh, more than 25,000 event mean concentration samples which were added to the highway runoff database. Um, if all any of you are from the neighboring southern states, you can send uh, Andy and Brian a nice thank you note for all the water quality data and flow data that they've provided for you. And as part of this analysis, we looked at uh, water quality data from 17 um, stormwater control measure, best management practice, that's the BMP sites in North Carolina, used to compute treatment performance statistics. I guess when you're writing that thank you note, you can also you know, mention all the BMP studies they're doing in North Carolina. Those guys are really pulling their weight. Next slide, please. All right, once we were able to get the decision support system, um, we put it together and North Carolina and Federal Highway cooperated to create a batch mode seldom version uh, that's now available for everybody. So we simulated 74,880 hypothetical highway projects in each region. So it was, um, I think the Blue Ridge, the Piedmont, and then the coastal echo regions. Um, for upstream basins, we looked at a range of drain, 13 drainage areas, three channel slopes, four different percent imperviousness in those three echo regions. And then for roadway characteristics, we looked at drainage area, highway slope, flow length, the BMP type for, for a total of 160 combinations of roadway variables. And that's how we get to the 74,000 for each echo region. So we did all these analyses, but then it kind of comes down to the question of what is our decision rule? And we used a lot of science, hydrology, hydraulics to develop seldom and to create the North Carolina um, seldom version. So we also wanted to, to use unbiased science that the regulator would, would agree with to make a decision rule. For a decision support system, you have to have an agreed upon decision rule. Next slide, please. All right, um, so we looked through the literature and we found that um, these guys from the NRCS did a lot of studies of runoff from small areas and they looked at you know the uncertainties in measuring flow from small basins concentrations uh, laboratory uncertainty just collecting and processing a sample uncertainty and um, these guys determined that um, the uncertainties range from about eight to 110 percent for total nitrogen and phosphorus and from about 7 to 53% for total suspended solids. Um, and that's for good studies where they had, you know, calibrated things, they had quality assurance and quality control, they had good protocols. Um, but these guys found that without good protocols and quality assurance, that uncertainties could be on the order of 400% of the measured value or the reported value. So North Carolina, DOT being very proactive, they engaged with their state regulator, um, you know, and started discussions about, you know, if we come up with a decision support system, what is the decision rule that, uh, you know, we can all agree? Now, this is good for the DOT because they could use the decision support system to uh, make a defensible scientific decision at 
any project across almost any project across the state and but it's also good for the regulator because if people are looking over their shoulder they can also point to we allowed for this because you know we followed this agreed upon process built on unbiased science you know usgs and um nrcs science next slide please So how does this work? So applying this criteria gives us a decision tree that informs the potential choice for a given site in North Carolina. So um, if you go anywhere in North Carolina, you know, you have your random place where you want to do something to the highway, you have to, you know, get approvals for that. So the first step is which scenario most closely matches your upstream basin and highway input characteristics at that site. Um, you know, we did 78,000, 74,000 simulations in each echo region, but you know, all, every place you go could be a unique combination of variables. So the first thing you do is you enter your variables into the decision support system and it picks out the simulations that we did that are mo that are closest to the ones, um, that you'll be doing actually in the field. Um, so then the decision support system pulls the summary statistics from the 1500 simulated events for that given scenario and then you know it, it asks the question does the untreated runoff increase the water quality at the 10th percentile that's on the wor you know the worst water quality near the worst water quality by 25 percent or more so if the answer is no that the highway runoff will not make a change in the downstream quality that's outside the uncertainty of a measurement then north carolina can use direct discharge at that site you know this would typically occur you know perhaps at large sites but we'll kind of look at the details in a minute or so um, if we run that analysis and the answer is yes does the untreated runoff increase that water quality by 25% or more, then um, we look at using minimum measures and we've pre-calculated all this for us. So if, um, if minimum measures will not reduce the impact on downstream water quality by that 25%, then they go to the BMP toolbox and um, the BMP toolbox is effectively an advanced BMP like bioretention or something like that. So the BMP toolbox in North Carolina is that list of approved comprehensive BMPs that they're, they're uh, allowed to use or they you know, agreed on the performance of that with a regulator. So even with this, it doesn't, this decision support system does not tell you exactly which BMP to use, it tells you, um, you know, you have to pick something from this category. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, I probably should have mentioned that minimum measures would be something like, you know, grassy swales rather than, you know, ha not having a stormwater pipe to the stream, it would be you know, treatment such as, you know, grassy swales, some places call it country drainage. So we'll look at for one region, the results of the analysis and talk about, you know, what's going on here. So the results of the 78,000 simulations in the Piedmont Echo region in North Carolina indicate that the ratio of highway pavement area to upstream basin area, it's important, but other variables also are important. So on this graph, you can see the vertical axis is the percent of simulations meeting a treatment criteria and the horizontal access from about 0 0.0002 to more than a thousand um, acres of high of pavement to square miles of upstream area in log scale. So the green area to the left is direct discharge. The white area in the middle is basic PMP. That's something like a swale, and the blue area to the right is um, one of the advanced BMPs from the BMP toolbox. So this catalog of simulations underlying the decision support tool indicates that in this ecoregion, 
the stormwater treatment goal for 100% of sites with a drainage area ratio less than about 0 0.007 acres of highway per square mile of upstream basin can be direct discharge of highway runoff. Similarly, the advanced BMP is the stormwater treatment goal for 100% of sites with a drainage area ratio greater than about 50 acres per square mile of upstream basin. Between these ratios, where you see all these, you know, the jaggedy lines on the boundaries between different choices, um, the selection of direct discharge, the basic vegetated com conveyance or an advanced BMP is also a function of the length and slope of the highway site and upstream basin and of the imperviousness of the upstream basin. I should mention, however, that the exact length and slope of the highway site do not have a large effect on results in comparison to the upstream basin properties. Um, and that's based on, you know, usually the length and slopes uh, ranges are small on highway sites and compared to the upstream basins. Uh, next slide, please. So to use the tool, the high, the North Carolina hydraulic engineer, who's not a water quality, you know, specialist, can use highway plans and the USGS online stream stats tool for North Carolina to get all the necessary site and basin properties to enter into the spreadsheet tool. So this little diagram shows, you know, in the upper left, it's kind of a schematic diagram of, you know, highway properties. Uh, the lower left is a delineated basin in the North Carolina stream stats application. So from the highway plans, you get your highway area, length and slope for your and you could do this with and without, you know, before and after scenarios as well. And then you look at your upstream area, length and slope, and what region you're in from stream stats. And you just plug these simple uh, variables into a spreadsheet application that's available online. And then you get that, that standard determination. Is it direct discharge, that basic treatment, best management practice like a grassy swale, or is it one of these advanced BMP toolbox uh, BMPs that you need to use on that site. Next slide, please. So the resources developed by this project are available online. Uh, on the left are those QR codes. If you're interested, on the right are these, um, you know, the, the links to the USGS um, publication warehouse and YouTube. So the resources are the Model Development Scientific Investigation Report 2019-5031. The Model Archive and Spreadsheet Tool are available on the USGS Science Base application. Um, the Decision Support Development uh, Description is in Scientific Investigation Report 2023-5113. And the video tutorials can be found through the seldom stormwater channel that's www.youtube.com at stormwater runoff okay next slide please all right i guess so in summary the north carolina seldom decision support tool provides a data-driven stormwater treatment goal for a highway project and again it's it's based on uh proven and reviewed science and the decision rules were were negotiated by the North Carolina DOT with the um, North Carolina um, Environmental Agency. So the tool streamlines communication between hydraulic engineers and environmental regulators, and use of the tool is an official step in the NPDES permitting process for North Carolina. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Brian, myself, Andy McDaniel, and then my former colleagues, Charlie Stilwell or Curtis Weaver at uh, USGS. All right, I think that's everything. Thank you.